So all the progress is on pace. Hallelujah. So let's prepare our hearts as we continue on this journey in the book of Matthew. It's about the kingdom of God. And before we get there, let's also prepare our heart first to give to the house of the Lord. Amen. Let me uh, invite Michelle to come forward to give thanks. Asher, please come forward. Hallelujah. Jesus on his journey three and a half years on earth and with the disciples, one thing that he's trying to introduce that is the kingdom of God. And we all have them. The kingdom of God is not a physical kingdom. And one day in the end times, there will come a physical kingdom. But as for now, the kingdom of God, we all live it out within our heart. Amen. And we expand from there. And we all know that as Jesus performed miracles and he teach and he performed miracles, every single thing that he does is never out of his calculation because he is trying to renew our mind. He is trying to change the way we think. We need to think differently than we used to think. We need to put away our old self and take on the new self as we are new creations in God. Amen, brothers and sisters? Now, on one occasion, after the Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem, you have different group of people actually. They all take turns to challenge Jesus. On one occasion, they actually ask Jesus, on what authority that you teach? Okay, if you read from uh, Matthew, the book of uh, chapter 20 up to chapter 22. On another occasion, they ask Jesus, what about resurrections? What do you think? If a couple, right, actually they bring in examples of uh, a woman that uh, married many, many times because the husband passed away and then married the, the sibling, this and that, whose wife will, will we be in heaven? All this sort of question. Brothers and sisters, we all know there are two groups of the religious order of their days. Who are they? They are the Sadducees and the Pharisees. These are the religious order of that day. They represent the law. While Jesus came, this group of people, they felt threatened by Jesus' teaching. They thought that Jesus is going to overthrow all the laws written by Moses. That's why they continue to challenge him, to challenge him. And yet, in the presence of Jesus, they miss one huge things that is so obvious to the salvation. That is, Jesus himself is the Savior that all this law and prophecy has been talked about. And he is standing, he was standing right there in the present, and yet they miss him. Now if you continue on the chapter 22, as they continue to challenge Jesus about questions about resurrection and all that, 
They run out of questions to challenge him, and then they have a lawyer actually to ask Jesus this question. Let's read this together. From Matthew chapter 22, verse 34 and on. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment of the law? And he said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. In other uh, version of the uh, uh, gospel, actually, it also adds, with all your strength. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depends all the laws and the prophets. Remember, brother and sister, I said that when Jesus comes in on the Mount of Transfiguration, Moses and Elijah appear before the disciples. Remember, I said Moses represents what? Moses represents the law, and Elijah represents the prophets. They represent the things of the past. And Jesus represents our future because He is the one that's going to fulfill the law and the prophets. Jesus is never here to abolish all the law that was set up for the nation of Israel. He is here to fulfill it. But when He fulfilled it, He fulfilled it with a new command. And we today we are going to look at that. Now, brother and sister, look at this answer that Jesus gave to the lawyer. This is a lawyer. When the religious order run out of questions to challenge Jesus, they have a lawyer to ask him this question. Who do you think, what do you think is the most important comment? And Jesus said, first, love God with all your heart. And then second, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, brother and sister, do you know what Jesus is referring to in this two short answer? Actually, at that time, all the people of Israel, they listen to Jesus, they know exactly what Jesus is referring to. He is talking about the Ten Commandments. The first four commandments is the commands for us to love God. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your mind, all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. The first four, it sums up the first four commandments. And then the sixth commandment and on. Honor your fathers and mothers. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery. And the list go on. It's the second commandment. You shall love the neighbor as you love yourself. Amen, brother and sister. So in fact, Jesus is referring back to the ten commandments when he answered them. This is the first and the second commandments. Amen. Now, brother and sister, this is what well, up until this day, the people of Jewish, they have to recite every day and every night. It's called Sema. The Sema is one of only two prayers that specifically command in Torah. The other is uh Ha Mason, Grace After Meals. It is the oldest fixed daily prayer in Judaism recited morning and night since ancient time. It consists of three biblical passages, two of which specifically speak of this thing, when you lay down and when you rise up. Where is in this Hebrew prayer? The prayer say, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength. You see, up until this day, brother and sister, the people of Jews, they recite daily, twice, the same commandments that Jesus answered them. You shall love the Lord your God with all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. And yet, somehow, with all that, they miss, they miss the key that is the person of Jesus. We talk about how the laws come about, brother and sister, since the fall of man, when Jesus, right in the Garden of Eden, commanded Adam not to eat from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And I mentioned to you that since the fall of man, God hurts the ground. And man has to continue the work. But we will be stressful because of our broken relationship with God. Amen, brothers and sisters? 
we will be stressful. And what is the law? Oftentimes, when we see the law, we have this first impression. Oh, the law is to control us. The law is to uh, damn us, to judge us. The law is to confine our freedom. And yet, actually, when God offered the law, did the law to Moses, it is a way to show his people that we all have fallen short of God's glory, that we all have sins against God. Law is not supposed to bow us, but to set us free. However, when the law is carried out by our flesh, by our own strength, it will become such a burden on us that we will fail over and over and over again, brother and sister. Like, look at this this way. God said, love Him with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. Brother and sister, let me see a raise of hand. Who over here can honestly say that you love Him with all your mind, all your soul, all your heart, all your strengths. Don't you think, brother and sister, every day we fail in doing that, and yet that is God's command. So how are we ever going to approach God? Because this is the first and greatest command in the Bible. We're supposed to love Him with everything that we have, and yet we continue to stumble and fail. And this morning, I'm going to show to you one big wrong approach when we come to work out. See, so this command seems to be impossible to obey. That's because in the natural state of man, or I should say in the sinful state of man, it is impossible. No human being with a fallen nature can possibly love God with all his heart, soul, and strength 24 hours a day. There's no way. You see, what is our enemy's biggest weapon? Satan, he is called the father of all lies. His weapon is to what? Deceive us. So even with this such great commitment, yes, we are to love God with all of our heart. And yet, if you are not careful with that, Satan can use the very same commandment to condemn us. See? What did I tell you? What does it say in the Bible? You fail again. You didn't obey God. Isn't it how often time we fail that way? That we fail God. Oh, I'm sorry God, I, I, I come short again. You know, and then it's a vicious cycle, right? Now, with the fall of man, after Adam and Eve, they have eaten the fruits uh, from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it comes judgment, it comes stress. Actually, one big, big thing that happened on that day is that we have sinned, brother and sister, what is the true definition of sin? Oftentimes we think that, oh, sin is, you know, when you lie, you sin, right, and all that. But what is the definition of sin? It's not sin means off target. We are off. Ever since we sin, we are off. We are no longer in the perfect harmonious relationship with God. We are just off right now. Whatever we do, we will always come short. So in another words, sin has made even our love conditional and fall short. You see, you might try to love God because no matter how you try, you will always come short because our love because of sin, has become conditioned. Now when we look at the Bible, and oftentimes you read the Bible, we didn't realize that there are many different definitions for love in the Bible. Today, we're going to look at that. Brother and sister, we're all going to learn from the Greek definition of love. Amen, brother and sister? There are four types of love. Some of you have been just long enough, you know there are different kinds of love. Amen? What is the first one? The agape love. We all know that. It is the highest of the four types of love in the Bible. Jesus showed this kind of divine love to his Father and to all humanity. Acapella. And second, philia. 
Philia is the type of love in the Bible that most Christians practice toward each other. And Storge. Storge is a term of love for the Bible that you may not be familiar with, even though the Greek word for family love is not specifically found in the scripture. And last, Eros. The Greek word for sex, uh, sensual love is Eros, which is self gratifying. Let me sum it up for you very easily. Eros. This is the love that God has commanded for all married couples. Pay attention, brother and sister. We know how the world has deviated this and, 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 and alien the, the love of God. This is a good love, but it is a love that has to be shared between husband and wife. Eros. Physical love. Emotional love. And if you read the Songs of Solomon, right, that's the uh, books of love. Right. We all know, all I talk about over there is what? Eros. Amen? But yet, we have come short. Look at this. Uh, it sums it up very well. We all know how, because of our sinful nature, as husband and wife, we can never lift up our relationship perfectly. As designed by God, we always come short. Right? And between husband and wife, what do we do? We always argue. Amen, brother and sister? We all know that in the church, the divorce rate is the same with, is with people that is not in the church. Amen? Why is it that the divorce rate is so high? Because we all have four shots in our relationship as husband and wife. What did Adam say? On, the, on his uh, tombstone, he said, at least my wife could not complain that I never listened to her. You know the joke, right? Because he listened to it and he did the apple. Uh, and if say, I married what used to be the perfect man. It, isn't this sum up very well, brother and sister? Especially husband and wife. Look at this. This shouldn't be the case. I bring this up, it's not to condemn, but to remind us how often time as husband and wife when we do not have the love of God in us and we fail one another. I have a lot of great one-liner for husband and wife. We all know that husband and wife, they, you know, for those of you that are single, you will experience it one day. Sorry, that's bad news for you. But have hope in God because God is going to make your marriage great. Amen? But this is what uh, is common out there when we talk about marriage. Since next week is Mother's Day, I'm going to put all the pressure on the men, alright? So, men listen. What kind of rings do men need for marriage? You all know the joke, right, next? Do you know what kind of rings you need for marriage? Engagement ring? Engage? Engagement ring? Wedding rings? Amen? And then enduring and suffering. <laughs> Let me see a show of hands. <laughs> no show of hands. The men all quietly agree with me. Amen. But I'm not going to raise my hand. Listen. All right. Marriage is a relationship in work in which one person is always right and the other person is a husband. Amen. Don't show your hands. Amen. Marriage. It's when a man and woman become as one. The trouble starts when they try to decide which one. <laughs> amen? You see how Pastor Lenny shared last week? Two become one. Amen? That is God's design. We need to return to God's design. We need to avoid this shortfall. But there's a way for us to do it. Not because of our own strength. I will continue and then you will realize where I'm going from there. What is next? This is Eros, right? Storge. Storge. Or Storge. Family love, right? Storge is the natural love and affection of parents for the child. Examples of family love. The love of mutual protection among Noah and his wife, the sons and father-in-law in Genesis. Now look at this. Oh, how cute. All mothers enjoy this moment. Right. This is how the story goes. One day, a little girl was sitting and watching her mother do the dishes in the kitchen. She suddenly noticed her mother had several strands of white hair sticking out in contrast of her black hair. 
She looked at mother and asked inquisitively, why are some of your hair white, mom? You know, mom knows the best, right? The mother thinking to herself, this is a proverbial moment, I'm going to teach my daughter a lesson. Why is my hair white? I'm going to teach you. Every single time, honey, sweetie, you make mommy sad, you make mommy cry. When you disobey mommy, that's when I have my white hair. The daughter looked at the mother, suddenly her face brightened up, and she responded, Oh, I got it now. No wonder grandma's hairs are all white. <laughs> you see, as husband and wife, we fail. As family, we fail. Amen. But thank God, in Jesus we have hope. Amen. This is uh, one that especially uh, I don't want to say the person, but let's read this. It's fun. When your mom's voice is so loud that even your neighbors brush the teeth and get dressed. <laughs> Who would like to scream at home? Don't show your hand, mothers. Because I know, think down inside, I know one. I know one. I heard the screaming all the time. <laughs> this is for the family. Wi-Fi went down for five minutes. So I had to talk to my family. They seem like nice people. <laughs> what happened? We all fall short, especially the young people today, around the dining table. When Jesus gathered the disciples together, he always talked about important lessons of life. Amen, brother and sister? It is not by accident, it is by design. The dining table is divine. We're supposed to sit there and share our life moments. That's why with uh, chick, chick filler, or chick, chick filler, chick, chick, chick filler, chick, chick, okay. chick filler. At one point, they come up with these uh, new features. They call it the cell phone box. What does the cell phone box do? They say, when my customer use the meal in my restaurant, put the cell phone in the cell phone box and talk to one another. You know that chick filler, that the founder, they, they pushed it. Chick filler. I never get it right this song. So brother and sister, when you are sitting across your parents, whether it is having dim sum or having, you know, a, 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 a McDonald's burger or whatever, a taco, you put down your cell phone and you talk to your parents and vice versa. Parents, no candy crush. Talk to your children. Amen, brothers and sisters? Amen. Now, failure. Failures refer to brotherly love. I don't want to mention that, but the best examples in the Bible is Jonathan and David. We all know Jonathan's father, King Saul, actually tried to kill David, right? But Jonathan always has a heart for David, and he protected him many, many times. It's brotherly love. And we all know Philadelphia is known as what? The city of brotherly love. Failure. Alright? Now what does friend does to one another when we come short? The saddest things about betrayal is that it never comes from your enemies. Now that's the reality of life, brothers and sisters. Amen? Of course, I'm praying we all together with the love of Christ, we can you know, uh, 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 bless one another and continue to build our friendship, amen? But in the world, that's what happens. Your friends are bound to betray you. I don't want to be sound too negative, but that's the reality. Now, since it's, uh, what I said, the election year just over, I thought I'd put up some elections joke out there. You all know that actually this is what happened, right? The first picture is saying, I really enjoy being friends with you during non-elections years. You know how many, actually, uh, people that support opposing parties and they end the friendships because of these uh, contentious elections? It shouldn't be that way, amen? The second picture says, election season has been a great opportunity to um, tweet down my Facebook friends. That's why oftentimes we emphasize once again, our hope is in Christ. Amen, brothers and sisters? Our hope 
is not in any particular political candidates, right? We will pray for them, we will bless them, amen? Because after all, they are human beings, and they will fall short. Now, the previous three, they are all, uh, what is that, conditional love. And here we are, we have agape love. That is the original love of God, amen? I don't want to go long for it. You all know the love of God is perfect. It is with the perfect love of God that He loved us. We're going to look into this later. So to sum it up, we have stoke, you can call affections between families, filia, friendship, eros, romance between husband and wife, and acape, the unconditional love of God. Amen? Now let's come back here. Pay attention once again to the comment, to, to what Jesus just answered the lawyer. He said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Of these two commandments, brother and sister, pay attention, depends on the laws and the prophets. Remember I mentioned that in the past, I say that oftentimes people have the wrong understanding, thinking that when Jesus comes, He's going to cancel out all the laws and the prophets. But it is not so. Because the Bible says, Jesus says Himself, He said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but I have come to fulfill them. Amen? All the law and the prophets. And yet, I mentioned to you that those two commandments, we will all fail in our sinful state. There's no way that I can love God with all my mind, with all my soul, all my heart, all my strength, 24 hours a day. So how is it we are to fulfill that law? Look at Romans chapter 13, verse 8 to 10. The title says, Fulfilling the law through what? Through love. Oh, no one's anything except to love each other for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not cover, uh, combat. And any other commandments are summed up in this work. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. However, the love that this scripture is talking about, it is not eros, it is not philia, it is not stoke, it is not the three types of love that are conditional. Law will be fulfilled through love, it is true akape love. Brother and sister, okay. amen? The only way to fulfill the law, it is through the perfect love of Christ. In John 15 and 13, they say, Greater love has no one than this, that someone laid down his life for his friends. And we all know that this scripture is talking about the perfect love of Jesus. Why is it love is so important? Because love is not just something that God does. Because He Himself in His actions is love. Amen? In 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. God is the perfect love. Brothers and sisters, I want to invite musicians to come forward. Musicians? How we can fulfill the law? It is true love. It is through what kind of love? It is through the agape love of Christ. Do you know that, brother and sister, after Jesus has come, that He fulfilled all the laws and all the prophets, Jesus actually gave us a new commandment. What is this new commandment? Let us read together, brother and sister. On the count of three, a new commandment. John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35. 
a new commandment I gave to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have loved one another. What is the key difference in this new commandment, brother and sister? Pay attention to what Jesus said. He said, a new commandment that I, I give to you, that you love one another. Now pay attention now. What did he say? Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. In, in other words, brother and sister, before Jesus comes, all we are capable of in our sinful state is the three types of conditional love. But after Jesus has come and fulfilled the law, and as we receive Jesus in our heart, we become capable of the agape love that I've been talking about. Just as I have loved you. Just as God has loved us with the agape love. Now, I am capable of loving the others with the same love. Amen, brother and sister. Just as I have received, now I can learn. You see how our love used to be conditional before we received Christ? I want to share with you these uh, events that has just happened recently. How many of you have heard of these Facebook killers that uh, broadcast his killing videos on Facebook? on Easter. How many of you show your hand? You heard of this on the news? You see, the guy on the left, that's the killer, his name is Steve Stevens. And the guy on the right is the victim. On Easter Sunday, after sharing meal with his one of his son, Peter father of ten children and grandchildren of fourteen and uh, grandfather of fourteen children, Robert Godwin Sr was senselessly murdered over the Easter weekend after a deranged man, Steve Stevens, who would later broadcast his action to Facebook, announced he was looking to randomly kill somebody. On the video, very clearly, it shows the recording. He said, oh yeah, here you go, that's the old dude. I'm gonna kill him, I'm gonna kill him. So he walked up to this old man, Godwin Sr., have a conversation with him, and then shot him in the head. Now, these tragedies, brother and sister, let's ask ourselves honestly, if this happened to us, how would we respond? What would be our feelings towards these killers? On the interview, on CNN by Anderson Cooper. These are the family members, and this is how they respond. One of the daughter, Tonya Gatlin, he explained to Cooper what that their, that the father, Gatlin Sr., taught them about faith. He said, the thing I will take away most from my father is he taught us about God. How to fear God, how to love God, and how to forgive. Each one of us forgive the killer, the murderer. Pay attention to the next one he said, she said. She said, we want to wrap our arms around you. Anderson Cooper was shocked by this response. He asked, you do? appearing to be a bit taken back by the sentiment. Tonya's and our sister continues. We absolutely do. I honestly can say right now I hold no animosity toward this man because I know that he is sick, he's a sick individual. I promise you I cannot do that. I could not forgive if I didn't know God. If I didn't know him as my God and my Savior, I could not forgive that man. And I feel no animosity against him at all. 
I actually feel sadness in my heart for this man. We lost our dad, our father, Yak Min Chunyu, but this mother lost her son. It's referring to Steve Stevens' mother. Because Steve Stevens, after a few days of uh, 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 trying to avoid getting arrested by the police, he committed suicide himself. And his children lost the fathers. Again, Cooper was done. So that's incredible that you're thinking about that, even in your times of grief. Now, Tanya, daughters, again, it provided a window into the father's beautiful soul. He said, it's just what our parents taught us. It wasn't that they just taught it. They didn't just talk about it, they live it. People would do things to us and we would say, Dad, are we really going to forgive them? Really? And he would say, yes, we have to. My father would be really proud of us and he would want this from us. He would say, Tonya, forgive them because they know not what they do. Hallelujah. Isn't that the famous words that Jesus said on that cross? And this is the response by the ex-wife. Asked to give a final word. Gasping for a former wife, Dorothy Crampton, Pack quite a punch in the final few seconds. The distraught woman who called Gatlin her best friend quotes John 3.16. Say, okay, since I got the last words, she said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have his everlasting life. Crompton added that the family didn't want Stevens to kill himself or for police to kill him because at the end of the day Jesus died for his sins too just as he died for me Brothers and sisters are your heart touched that there is a power to forgive the worst kind of sins or crime committed against us because Jesus has went ahead and died on the cross to forgive our sins we as we receive Jesus we are empowered we now understand what is the perfect love the Bible says no greater love than this than for one man to lay down his life for his friends that is the love that is living in each of our hearts right now, brothers and sisters. As we get to know Jesus more and more, you will find rooms in your heart to forgive and even more to love with the perfect love of God. Amen, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Let's all stand together and sing the song.